Welcome to Lex's World in our Soil 102 episode where we'll talk about slightly more advanced topics like CEC values, keeping soil cool, as well as some of the more common amendments that you can add to soil and things to keep in mind when adding amendments. I'm going to assume for the purposes of this episode that you understand the terminology explored in my Soil 101 episode. So the next new term you have to understand is CEC, the cation exchange capacity, which is a very complex measurement in milliequivalents per 100 grams of soil that measures the capacity of a soil or other medium to attract, hold, and exchange cations, the positively charged elements, with the roots. So basically it's the ability to provide nutrients to roots. Here are the CEC values for many popular mediums and amendments. High CEC soils hold nutrients and water better and exchange nutrients with roots better. So it makes sense that those with high CEC happen to be the ones you see used all the time for cannabis. Some examples are a clay loam or a silt loam mix or a peat moss mix. As you can see, the medium with the worst CEC is sand, which is among the reasons that so few things can grow in it. However, having very high CEC isn't the one and only variable that determines a good soil. For instance, pure clay sure is up there, but still blows for growing cannabis. Pure peat moss also has issues despite its high CEC, for reasons that we discussed in Lesson 101. Regardless, the whole point of this is that if you're looking at two similar soils by different brands and they both provide a CEC value, you're better off with the higher one. An important aspect of CEC value is that it applies not just to soil but also to amendments. Anything other than the type of soil that you mix into your soil counts as an amendment, no matter how weird it might be. The CEC value of an amendment is very useful in comparing and contrasting it with another. Vermiculite, mushroom compost, compost in general, and most manures are examples of high CEC value amendments. And speaking of amendments, they break down into two main categories, mineral and organic. Mineral amendments have the advantage of being fairly pH neutral, and they do not create any organic slash bacterial activity in the soil you're mixing them into, so less likely to cause complications. The ever-popular expanding clay palettes count as a mineral amendment if mixed into soil, as do perlite and vermiculite. Before adding any soil amendment though, be sure to research it heavily. How much of it you need, when you should add it in the plant's life cycle into the soil, and what does it do. With mineral amendments especially, CEC values can sometimes be low, so you need to understand why you're adding it. Perlite is a great example because it has a low CEC, but people add it anyway because of what it does for increasing soil's aeration. Organic amendments, meanwhile, tend to be high CEC, not pH neutral, and able to cause bacterial changes in your soil. There are also rules for every organic amendment about how long it lasts and when you can use it. For instance, organic compost is a terrific organic amendment, but you can't mix it in until it's a year old. At the same time, most organic amendments have a one-year expiry date from when you mix them in before they're all used up. But despite the added complexity, organic amendments are considered more, like, effective and powerful overall than mineral amendments. Granted, this is more my opinion than fact, and I use organic amendments in modest amounts more than mineral amendments. Common organic ones are various composts, manures, coconut fiber, and peat. Personally, as those who watch my grow journals know, I'm a fan of the animal poop in the world of organic amendments due to its high effectiveness and relatively low cost, particularly small amounts of chicken manure or bat guano. That's why I always, always carry those two manures in my grow gear shop, which I'll link to in the description. Now, as you may have guessed, you can get pretty crazy in terms of adding soil amendments. Some people make super complex soil mix recipes, but the more complex they are, the harder they might fall, and the easier it is to accidentally toxify your cannabis plants by adding too much of something. So that's not really my recommendation. Instead, I recommend going with a silt loam type of soil, bought at the store, 
You can test it for pH and sodium, and then you pick one of two organic amendments and put them in and see how it goes. Then feel free to experiment slowly and carefully with more. Or look up trusted mix recipes, which I think we'll get more into in Soil 103. And as I said in the 101 episode, your soil and the particular things that are in it are not the end-all be-all of your grow. I know folks who spend 70% of their time obsessing about their soil mix recipe and ignoring fundamental basics regarding their lighting. That is not the way to go. But what is a big deal when it comes to your soil is its temperature. Much like hydroponics, water is better when it's a bit cooler, so is soil. For most gardeners, keeping soil cool is not really a problem, but if you run a relatively warm grow room where temperatures don't drop off much at night, or you garden outdoors using containers under a really strong direct sun, then you may end up with soil that's too hot. Insulating your pots with secondary pots, using pots that are white, or protecting pots with styrofoam can all keep soil temperatures down outdoors. Covering the soil with mulch also does wonders for reducing soil temperatures, outdoors or indoors. Usually though, indoors there are no issues with keeping soil cool. The easiest way is to just set grow pots directly down on cold concrete floors and you're all good. All that said about keeping your soil cool, it shouldn't get too cold. Below 10 Celsius is counterproductive. Though if your soil is well below 10 Celsius, odds are you're more worried about air temperature than you are about soil temperature. Anyway, I think that's it for soil for today. Hope you found it useful, and if enough people watch and like this video, then I'll just keep going with more and more complex episodes into the topic of soil. So subscribe for those, and we'll see you all next time.